Facebook has been accused by U.N. investigators and human rights groups of facilitating violence against the minority Rohingya Muslims in Burma by allowing anti-Muslim hate speech and false news to spread on its platform. Vermont Democratic Senator Patrick Leahy questioned uh, Facebook's Zuckerberg about this at the hearing yesterday. Senator, what's happening in Myanmar is a terrible tragedy, I, and we well, need to we, do more. We, we all agree with that. Okay. But you and investigators have blamed you, you blame Facebook for playing a role in their genocide. We all agree it's terrible. How can you dedicate and will you dedicate the resources to make sure such hate speech is taken down within 24 hours? Yes, we're working on this. And there are three specific things that we're doing. One is we're hiring dozens of more Burmese language um, content reviewers, because hate speech is very language specific. It's hard to do it without people who speak the local language, and we need to ramp up our effort there dramatically. Second is we're working with civil society in Myanmar to identify specific hate figures so we can take down their accounts rather than specific pieces of content. And third is we're standing up a product team to do specific product changes in Myanmar and other countries that, that may have similar issues in the future um, to prevent this from, from happening. So that's Mark Zuckerberg. Zainek Tufekchuk, if you can respond. So I think there are some things that are genuinely hard and complex about this transition to the digital economy, and we all need to figure it out, and including Facebook. So there are some things I have sympathy for. The situation in Myanmar and what Facebook allowed is inexcusable, because uh, I know that per I personally know that at least since 2013, civil society groups have been literally begging Facebook to step up. What happened is, as the country transitioned from this uh, military junta to a more democratic, more open situation, Facebook came in along with uh, the rapid spread of digital uh, SIM cards and phones, but without the proper oversight. Like, imagine, like, consider all the problems that this kind of uh, new public sphere is causing in Europe and U.S., where we have a lot of countervailing institutions. So in uh, Myanmar, uh, there is an extremist Buddhist group um, that is very anti-Muslim and is promoting ethnic cleansing. This is not a joke. It's the second biggest refugee outflow in the world. And what they started doing is they started using Facebook to spread their uh, literally blood libel, you know, all these false accusations. There was an interview with a uh, Burmese person about the Muslim minority, and he was like, they're horrible, they're doing all these horrible things. And they asked him, how do you know? He said, I saw, I know it thanks to Facebook, in enormous amount of hate speech went uh, viral without Facebook putting in the kind of things that Zuckerberg is finally saying they're going to put in. This is a company with half a trillion market capitalization. This is a company where people have been asking, begging, crying, pleading with, uh, you know, privately, publicly, for years to hire an enormous amount of people and try to get a handle on the situation. It's not that they're causing the whole problem by themselves, of course, but they were instrumental. They were the Radio Rwanda. They were the, you know, triumph of the will. They were the—that's the kind of role they played in this country. And it was only recently, and only in the wake of the scandal, I'm finally hearing the CEO address this. And I think when we look back on it, you know, some of the stuff is, again, really, the digital transition is hard and we're all in over our heads. I think there's no excuse for their ignorance, their negligence, and the fact that dozens of people uh, for a country, you know, of where ethnic cleansing is going on after so many years is such a minimal step. They should have had as large a team as necessary. They have the money as early as possible. Uh, it's the kind of thing, like, if you wake up as the CEO of this company, it should be the first question you ask everyone and say, I'm going to spend as much time and as much energy on this, because this is the kind of thing that's going to go down in history. It's causing enormous human misery. It's destabilizing the whole region with refugee outflows, people stuck in Bangladesh, people stuck elsewhere. So I think it's an example. It's the, it's, for me, the most egregious example of what Facebook's lack of 
internal drive for proper oversight and what our society's lack of attention to intervene and say, look, Burma, Myanmar might be another country, but it's our company that's kind of, that's implicated here. And, you, you know, U.S. and Europe could have done more, too. And it's the saddest situation, because now that it's so out of hand, there are a couple dozen moderators, uh, new products finally happening, will probably have a marginal effect, whereas maybe earlier with enough civil society and global attention, plus Facebook doing what it needed to do, maybe we wouldn't be here. And this is millions of people who are displaced. There are thousands of people who are killed. So I, I think it's just the worst example, and it's just shameful. I don't know what else to say. <clears throat>